Welcome to FC Hornet Media. I'm Sarah Leon, and you are watching part one of our series introducing a brand new artist in residency at the Fullerton College Art Gallery. We are joined by Pavel Zavedo, who will be opening his new exhibit in the FC Art Gallery on February 15th. So it says here that you study under the guidance of artists Chinda Bono, Sagedo, and Raul Ferreira in the Fine Arts School of uh, Lanka. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, um, after like four years, like being at Soft Out, um, there was a chance to open a in Vegas this uh, to be like a BFA for like uh, fine arts. So I I took the like the I went to school for like four years, and Shinsaburo Takeda, he's a prolific prolific uh, artist, uh, moved from Japan to Mexico, and uh, he's been there for over like 50 years, I guess. Mm -hmm. So he's the one that like pushes a lot of like artists, like on my generation to start like, uh, or like to seek more like for relief print. And so we used to do a lot of like uh, large scale, large scale like wood blocks or like researching about like uh, the topics there. We are like around Oaxaca and um, or, like our heritage. And Roller was our uh, painting teacher. So I used to like, I usually went to have a major or like to be more like specialized about painting but when i moved to california that's when i started like shifting and i started like doing like three weekends so i went with the opposite and stuff yeah yeah so um it says also that they kind of tell you traditional techniques as well so how does that um kind of go into your printmaking as well does that do you take those techniques into what you do now? Yes, because for example, like uh, relief print is like an uh, an ancient technique, and like mostly is like is uh, really well like predominant in uh, the art history of Mexico, like Taller Grafica Popular. So that was kind of like a guidance or like, or language or like visual education when we were doing it, and I it's a way for me to like it still like has like make can make a social commentary, like have a work on my personal production and I still like work with the uh, with community as well. So it has like, it's like a shapeshifter to me. That's how I seen it. Yeah. And yeah, it's like timeless as well. Yeah. So what kind of made you want to kind of shift to California? Like what made you want to kind of- Oh, the reason why I came here is just like, it was like um, my daughter was born here, so yeah. By that time, we had moved to California, mm -hmm. so and just ended up staying here. Just basically, I moved to Riverside, the Inland Empire. Yeah. That's where I've been the longest. And later on, I started like because of work, uh, I started moving now more towards like LA, and now just like basically I like commute to like different places. So sometimes I'm like. Um, in San Francisco, like doing like some like uh, some of my work and come back to LA and go back to the Inland Empire. So sometimes just like in those three places. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> sorry. Do you think um, the California lifestyle kind of started to influence your art a little bit? Can you tell me about that? Oh well, yeah, it's because like for example, it it makes me more aware about like uh, like um, for example like uh, cultural identities as well, like how like. Uh, uh, mixes the or communities and like a lot of like ways to for us to like interpret it, like our culture and like spread it too as well and like there's like many uh, I feel like ecosystems that exist uh, besides that a central idea and how those ones start developing mm -hmm. so that like always like uh, inspired me for example like the England Empire like a lot of like uh, young folks start like doing their art or like have a way to say without like expecting like uh expecting like institutions to like give an approval you know so yeah. they just find out like instead of like building this like um this like um this like support they sometimes it just pass like the borders you know so mm -hmm. that, that's that's something to me like it's really inspiring uh, because for some, like coming here as an immigrant sometimes like it's like you don't know many people you know just sort of building the community and it just like could reflect to like as a student or you know, like you know like uh, you have a different background yeah. so that to me like really like um inspired me to like to look inside and like to just like be more like uh, have a purpose on what i'm doing like like with my art practice and 
and like the images and uh, I feel that's how like sometimes you like start going out. That's so with those messages that you want to have your art kind of perceive, like mm -hmm. what is your process with that? Uh, for example, it's uh, it's like I think it's like a it's like a, it, 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 I feel a lot of stuff is like a mirror. It always like reflects. When, whenever I'm making like a piece, or I'm working in a certain project. Uh, it doesn't just it's uh, isolated because at the same time I'm probably uh, working in a project where which involves community or like I'm working with somebody else. So I feel that feeds to into my practice to into like creating the images as well. Yeah. So that kind of like always expanded. So that's why I feel like sometimes when I'm doing like some carvings or like images, I always kind of have the interest to like translate those images into all other surfaces, you know. Yeah. And then even to learn from other artists too as well. So like always to me, like keeps it interested to me. Yeah. So tell me, like, how does printmaking work? How'd you get into that? Mm, basically, you can get into that. Uh, uh, I feel like a lot of like uh, art you can get into when you're like bored. <laughs> you're like yeah. doing something. You're like, oh, I find out you can do, I can carve an eraser and make stamps, you know. Let's Start see. whittling. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I you know when I got into that it was by accident. Mm -hmm. I went. Uh, I was in Oaxaca City. I was dropping off a friend to like his college, and there was this studio. It's called uh, Taller Rufino Tamayo. It still exists in Oaxaca. It actually is turning fifty years this year, and um, so I went there, and it was the gate open, and I went to check it out, and there was all this like old like uh, colonial house in Oaxaca. And I saw the studios and I asked, hey, what, 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 what's in here? And they told me, oh, we offer like different like classes, but mostly there's not like a, like a teacher, like somebody can like guide you, but at the same time, you basically do your own things, yeah. you know? So I'm like, oh, this is cool. So I started like coming out, hanging out. And later on, I was just like being an assistant of a lithography. And I started doing lithography because it was, you, you basically draw over like a limestone. Mm -hmm. And to me, before, I used to live in the uh, Oaxacan coast, then Puerto Escondido. And uh, in Oaxaca City is the valleys. And uh, when I got there, like, I, I can only just draw. I only have the knowledge about just drawing on a piece of paper, you know? Yeah. So this was, like, something similar. But there was, like, more, like, process in, in be, before you get into the drawing. That really interests to me a lot. And at the same time, the camera, the like friendships or like the communal, the involves into like the studio and how you can meet artists that already have like a career that's developed into the ones that you just come in and the involved that you have in it. So I think all those reasons, like it, it can be more like interested about it. Yeah. So you said that you have a daughter. Mm -hmm. Has she? Kind of influenced your art as well yeah because uh, for example uh, at the same time like uh, at the same time it's like talk, being involved in like uh, her like um, her like uh, growing up in her like uh, her like identity too as well especially like uh, well like coming from Oaxaca or like her, like her heritage from like the Zapotics from like my, my my family so that's something they all it's always like represented with her and just like just like being in the life or like as a parent like having like a, a children i think is is i think I, I like it a lot and it's just like the way how like education works with with them and like how like things always is like a sharing you know and yeah. how like she grows and like gets involved into their community as well mm -hmm. so even i remember i used to do like an image or drawing and we just like talk and i asked her i, I don't know i always like last to I like to ask children because if they like something, they feel something, they would just say it, you know. If you ask an adult or something, they probably gonna they have there's more layers, you know, to yeah. hold it. Uh, sometimes when I'm painting the murals and there some cars pass by and there's like children, they pull down the glass and they're like, I like your work. They get them from the street. So I think like that's really cool, you know, they stop yeah. by and they start talking. I, I think that's really like uh that's a good point because they're just like sincerely, you know, that's what yeah. I like to, to hear from them. Well, they're, yeah. they definitely tell the, tell the truth, that's for sure. Yeah, and they always question everything, you know, and they question uh, what I do like to, they question any like uh, entity of power as well. So that's yeah. something like that's always good. Do you think like 
the questions that you get from children, they kind of influence like the way you answer to other people when they ask about your work too. Just try to be as honest as you can about it. Yeah, I mean, it's like always like that's the bottom line, you know, like just to be honest about like what you do it or like, you know, everything like what I do, like personally, you know, sometimes it's like time. I take time to, when I answer stuff, you know, or I'm like sometimes like just long pauses <laughs> yeah. because I'm like, how are we going to explain this or not? How we can just bring those words to like first to Spanish and later to English. So how to. Yeah. But yeah, it, 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 it's cool, you know, it's always good like, just to talk with, in general with anybody who's mm -hmm. interested, that's, that's, the, that's a great thing. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you have a, a lot of art exhibited in different locations and shows. Um, mm -hmm. Which one was like the most memorable to you? Mm -hmm. um, I think they're all... I like them all because there's always like some way that I can just like grow as like a artist or like creator because there's always like for example from this and by uh, being involved with the students while they're like hanging the, the, the or curating the show to me it's already like thinking about like a next project you know but things that I can just like for what they're saying I can like it helps to open another windows or gates to my my work mm -hmm. so that always like helps to every show but one i don't know it's like I, 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 from every every show or like or project that i've been involved mostly like when it's solo uh, i do like because there's always like yeah that way to experiment to grow and not just like growing as like a way to how like make an image but as a way to like be better organized person yeah that's always hard but uh but yeah that's that's always there i always appreciate like when folks have like a saying you know yeah because it's a lot like to learn because it only when i you do an artwork an art piece only stays with you for like certain period of time later on goes to somebody else and it goes through all this like uh, uh filters you know in at the end it's like that's like that's the that's the awesome part because you don't know what's gonna happen, you don't know what's gonna be said. Yeah. But the best thing is to always to get I think attention reaction from somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Something that I've um, heard is you have to take in art mm -hmm. to in order to keep producing it. So what art piece has have you seen or have you like experienced from other people? that has stuck out to you the most, that might have just influenced you and your art the most? What do you think? Do oh, you have that's one? a good question. Yeah. Uh, uh, hmm. Well, um, I think um, there was this artist, uh, when I used to be in Oaxaca, uh, there was this artist that I saw his work, uh, his name is Melesio Galvan, and they had an exhibition at the Instituto de Artes Gráficas de Oaxaca, Diego. And the drawings were like beautiful, like the lines, the, the messages. It was like a social commentary, but it was like well, like achieved, like uh, like uh, like the skills and I, I don't know. To me, it was like one of the best things that I've seen. I always remember that. But later on, I learned more about the story about the artist who had like a was like, um, and like, and tragically, because like, um, the 60s, 70s, there was a lot of like, uh, in Mexico, there was a lot of like, uh, um, students' movements, and like, in many like countries, like in South America, like here as well, uh, Central America, um, there was all this like repression, you know, so there was all the students like asking for like a better on their like community and like, under institution and keeping away like a uh, uh, police repression. So this artist was really involved in it. And he was murdered by by the cops. But then like cover up like it was, uh, he committed suicide. And they just created this like fake uh, um, um, way of how he passed away. But it was like not all, and his daughter is the one that like wrote, uh, still like has his like artwork uh, Around and I always hear from other artists. It's like one of the, the he was one of like the best artists on his lifetime, 
So to me, it was like really like, it was like, it was so intense you know, to see everything that I, I remember when I see it, it was like, I like it was like so beautiful and powerful at the same time, you know? Mm -hmm. And like sometimes when like, I think when I artwork or like something that just like takes you out of a place and you're like, you just stare, that's, that, that, that means a lot. Yeah. And that was to me stuck into, into, into my, into my, into me. Yeah. Um, so to kind of like switch gears a little mm -hmm. bit. So when you were called up mm -hmm. to do this artist in residency, what were, what were your thoughts? What, what were you feeling when you got that call? What I'm going to do. Gonna yeah. do <laughs> uh, um, well, I was just, uh, well, I was just flattered, you know, like, and I was like really like amazed to have this opportunity, you know, I still like an hour <laughs> yeah. coming here and like everybody doing like worry. I'm like, what? <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's great. Um, yeah, and later seeing like the artists that have been here before, it makes it more like, more like, it, 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 it's, it's a plus, you know, I cannot mm -hmm. describe it and put it in words sometimes. I just like, um, uh, I'm grateful, you know, for this opportunity and like uh, all what's been happening after that. So, yeah, I'm just like, I'm just amazed. I'm just like seeking it. Every time I come here, I'm like, I'm just like, let's see, you know. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. And like the reception and everything is like, I think it's great, you know. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate it a lot. It's weird. After this, it's going to be like great, you know, like yeah. grow up. So I don't want to give anything away, but mm -hmm. what do you think people can expect from this exhibit? Mm -hmm. Uh, um, I don't know, um, well, I don't know, I think it's like open to interpretations. Yeah. Uh, I think it's like probably like, em not embraced, but probably like, yeah, see uh, how like a traditional technique uh, reflects in, uh, I don't know, like shape shift into like different other uh, topics during these times you know and i think uh other like for like uh whenever like if when people see this like whenever they come here like it's kind of like they have to be open they, this is like uh this has been a break of like with students and artists you know so it, it unfolds you know mm -hmm. so that's like pretty cool you know so just kind of where people come to have like this like really like looking for like those you know Nietzsche so like thinking about it, you know, because yeah, it's been like a great project for everybody, you know. So mm -hmm. I think like that makes it like more value, you know. So yeah. like when people come to like see like there was not just two, three people, two people working and planning this. Now it's like it was it's a team and like and everybody like how they were like putting out. So that's awesome. I think it's gonna be well because the effort and the energy that's been around. So yeah. Very well. And one last question. Mm -hmm. Um one last question. Um, what do you want students or even just people that visit um, your exhibit to um, take away from it? Mm. Well, just to think about, like, like I said before, the possibilities to like uh, create community besides things that already been saying, like how you supposedly have to like do certain things and to like, I don't know, certain system you know mm -hmm. going out of the box uh, like always like i don't know support like your like your community your friends you know that, that's a good part because like somebody grows the same time brings everybody together you know yeah. it's like it's like more, more into that the idea that i that i feel and that is important you know yeah that's very well thank you so much well, thank you once again, you are watching FC Hornet Media, and we are with Pavel Acevedo, the newest artist in residency at the Fullerton College Art Gallery. Coming up in just a moment, we are going to join Pavel as he makes his selections in the horticulture nursery to help accentuate his art. Not, yeah, growing out, so kind of that's the thing like, about it, you know, more like uh, organic, like setting up with the plants. Yeah, so. Yeah.
mean, it, it, it's cool because some like the pieces they're like you can see the uh, the wood, you know, they're like carved out. So right that's good. Yeah. Okay. Could we take that one? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. How yeah. old is that one? You know, like this. One. Over a decade. Over a decade. Uh, you know, I was like talking like for example, like that one, like, I was thinking for example for like the pieces like the Sochi. Yeah. Like something probably the spreads kind of around it. Yeah. And probably if it's that one around, maybe like we can put some color in between, you know. That could be for that one. Like the feature could be, the, the sculpture piece could be in the middle and those ones around it. And maybe we can just add some like, I don't know, accents of color around it. You know? That would be an option for that one. Or it could be like something lower than that one, you know? We want to thank Pavel Acevedo for joining us on FC Hornet Media and giving us an inside look on his new residency in the FC Art Gallery. Don't forget that this is part one of our series with Pavel. Next week, tune in as we will bring you part two at the opening of his exhibit on February 15th. We'd like to thank Seiya Rokia, Jasmine McNeil, Pavel Acevedo, and Dean Grant Linzel for their time and the opportunity to cover their brand new residency. I'm Sarah Leon, and you've been watching FC Hornet Media.